Hey, welcome to Bishop Justice. It's another week going by. We thank you for all the comments I've gotten on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other social media, all the good comments. I thank you. God loves you. I love you. Let's talk about what's going on this week. Uh, we have, on St. Patrick's Day, uh, Gospel of Stravaganza. Brian Courtney Wilson is coming to Tabernacle Baptist Church. Now that commercial is going to be on, it's going to show here later, but it's March 17, 2012. Doors open at 4 p.m. Uh, concert starts at 5 p.m. Tabernacle Baptist Church, 1223 Laney Walker Boulevard, Augusta, Georgia, 30901. Uh, and they're going to have three other people there. Check it out. And like I said, the, the follow up at the end of the show and give me more information and we're gonna to go to commercial break, you'll see it. But Brian Courtney Wilson, check him out at Tabernacle Baptist Church along with For Christ. Uh, I, I went to it last time, I'm just telling you, they are beautiful. I mean, they are had the spirit of the Lord in them. Uh, with that said, we got, um, talk about my upcoming guest, uh, Barbara Gordon is next week, and then we got uh, Cleveland Jones, good man in Christ, and we're going to look forward to that. But I have to cut to the announcement. I was going to do in the news, talk about some announcements today, but I'm not going to talk about it today because I want to devote the entire show to my uh, my guests. And so I'm not going to do in the news today. Everybody calls me up talking about Bishop, talking about this, talking about that. Uh, I'm not going to do it today. But what we're going to do is devote as much time as I can to R.W. Allen, uh, the next, I'm already going to say it, the next congressman. <laughs> the congressman, <laughs> he's going to be the congressman. Congressman R.W. Allen. Congressman, how you doing today? Great, thank you. Thank you. God bless yes. you. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, being here on the show. It's just, uh, um, I, I just all I can say is thank you. Um, before we get into the political things, who is R.W. Allen? Well, I was born and raised in Columbia County okay. on the Georgia Hereford Farm there. And uh, I grew up there. Then I went on to uh, Auburn University, mm -hmm. to college, uh, where I met my uh, wife, Robin, of 38 years. And we have had uh, uh, four wonderful children. We have uh, uh, three, uh, four grandchildren. And we have one that should be here any time. Okay. And, uh, but uh, uh, when I was 25 years old, 35 years ago, uh, uh, my wife and I took our savings and we started a small construction business here in Augusta. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, that business has uh, grown over these many years. And uh, we have a group that is now uh, running that business uh, and taking ownership of that business, which has allowed me time to run for the United States Congress. Well, you know, I kind of hope that, you, well, I already put you there as a congressman. Have you met Cam Newton? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> He's my, me and my wife, and that's my favorite player. I just hate to say it, but that's my, that's Cam Newton. I met Cam Newton because he, he, he's, I don't know how to say it, but I, I believed him when nobody else would believe in him. Right. He told me, he said, Bishop, you believe when nobody else would believe in me. Yeah. And uh, look what he turned out to do. Well, he said at the end of the national championship game, on the stage with millions of people watching watching and they had asked him about all the controversy during mm -hmm. the season right and he said if god be for us who can be against us i was going to say something and uh, and, 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 the pla and the place went uh, yeah obviously went crazy you know what we, we got off to and i normally do my bible scriptures and i don't know why i didn't do it today but i had to we had to back up a good man's steps is ordered by the lord Okay, the good a good man says ordered by the Lord. Y'all know that I do the TV show, and I talk about a Bible script before I do anything else. So a good man steps is ordered by the Lord. So we have R. W. Allen here in Bishop Justice. So I, I I don't know how I didn't do that, but anyway, what have you learned during your business career that you can bring to Washington, create jobs, and get the economy going? Well, uh, you know, in in business, as in, and we talked about. Uh, Right. It's all about leadership. Uh, Cam Newton was a great leader. It is a great leader. Right. He's doing a great job at Carolina. And, uh, uh, but uh, it's all about leadership. And uh, with leadership, uh, obviously, comes values. 
uh, hard work is a value, a character, uh, all those things uh, that I've learned in business over the years uh, to, be, uh, to be successful and grow the business, I want to take to Washington, D.C. Uh, to fix Washington and uh, create jobs and get this economy uh, uh, moving again. You know, I, I was in the construction business. That's why I kind of, I'm a supporter of yours. There's no doubt. Everybody knows I support R.W. Allen. There's no secret well, to that. I appreciate that. Thank uh, you. And I do everything I can. I see R.W. Allen signs all over the place. But what makes you in the business community, the business atmosphere, better than anybody else? Because I, I just, I just, your quality, well, I'm about to tell you the secret, your quality of work, but you go ahead and tell it, though. <laughs> well, uh, certainly, quality of work. Uh, yeah. certainly, again, it's all about leadership. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the greatest leadership books uh, ever written, Good to Great. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll never forget this. you got to get the right people on the bus and get them in the right seats. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, it's pretty amazing. I tell you, I, I look at something else. You have been very involved in the community here in Augusta. Uh, what are some of the things that you most pro, you know, proud of relating to the charitable and or community involvement? Because you do a lot for the community, so. Exactly. Well, it, it, it's important. Uh, uh, you know, how the community goes, how the city goes, so does the country. Right. And, uh, you know, we have always been uh, very supportive uh, in our business of the community because we feel like it's our responsibility to make our community a better place mm -hmm. to live. Uh, I've been involved in, uh, you know, originally I was involved in the YMCA because my children were involved mm -hmm. in the YMCA in the soccer program and right. the t-ball and I became a coach. And, uh, but over the years, uh, well, one is I've had a hard time saying I, I didn't even know you were a coach. Uh, yes. I didn't know. Yeah. That. I was a coach in the county for 10 years. I'm, really? I'm the winningest coach in Richmond County. Really? F coach football and basketball. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Those are great. Those I, are some no, great, I, great no. years, and uh, I, I enjoyed that uh, so much. But uh, as time has gone on, uh, you know, I've just I've been so fortunate to be involved in, in some great, uh, great programs, mm -hmm. many of which, uh, uh, frankly, uh, have helped people. Uh, uh, reduce the cost of government uh, mm. in, in, in uh, certainly in this community, certainly Heritage School. Mm -hmm. uh, Heritage School is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a Christian school right. for, for children who uh, cannot otherwise afford a right. private school right. and uh, has been a tremendous success uh, in the community. And, and these are children who are branded as losers right. in the public school right. systems. And Heritage, Heritage Academy has been able to make winners. And then, of course, uh, you know, there's Christ Community Health Services. You know, there's a lot of talk about how do we deal with health care mm -hmm. this day and time. Well, that is a wonderful institution. And uh, they're taking care of those who uh, are uninsured and uh, those who, uh, who can't afford uh, medical care. You know, I was thinking about the medical part, and I really don't want to get into the uh, MCG and... Uh, ASU situation because mm -hmm. I uh, I have a close relative at MCG so close it's called my wife <laughs> <laughs> so but I, I don't want to I don't want to make you take a, a, a turn on that All right but it's kind of going at one way we thought it was going one way mm -hmm. and I really but Give me a quick assessment on that. I will ask you that. What do you, what's the quick assessment? Well, obviously, uh, us community leaders came together. Uh, this, the, you know, the state is interested in, in, in frankly, uh, in this economy, uh, when the uh, when funding is uh, difficult to come by. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, consolidation is is just one of the uh, resources available. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know, there was some uh, study done and uh, uh, a group of uh, leaders in this community, uh, including those on the state level, uh, decided it was best to consolidate those two schools. Yeah. Now, obviously, time is going to tell mm -hmm. uh, how that's going to work out. Uh, certainly, I, you, know, uh, you know, my prayer is that it is, it's, it's, it's going to work out the best for our community and the students and, uh, and uh, really give us a uh, top-notch uh, state university right. here in Augusta that... Uh, People will come from all over the world yeah, to I don't study want, and yeah. do research. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't want to put you on the spot because right. let me tell you, I have a daughter who's an intern that's going to be a doctor right. in MCG. Right. 
So I have my wife works in MCG, and I have a daughter in MCG. Exactly. And so, getting ready to be an intern. So. Well, I'll tell you one of the one of the positive aspects of that is the governor has designated this as the state cancer center. Yeah. And so that's going to bring a lot of research dollars. Hold that thought. Rick. Yes. We got to go to commercial break. We got to go commercial break. We'll be right back with R. W. Allen. Well, I'm, actually, you know what? We're going to tell his first name. Well, I said R. W. Allen. We're going to ask R. W. Allen what the R. and the W. Allen stands for. We didn't even <laughs> ask him that. And I get permission to call him by his first name. Thank you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Tabernacle Baptist Church, along with For Christ, present the St. Patrick's Day Gospel Extravaganza, March 17, 2012, at the Tabernacle Baptist Church in Augusta, Georgia. Featured artists include For Christ, Claude Deuce, Trey McLaughlin and the Sounds of Zamar, and special guest artist Brian Courtney Wilson. Remember the St. Patrick's Day Gospel Extravaganza, March 17, 2012, at the Tabernacle Baptist Church, 1223 Laney Walker Boulevard, Augusta, Georgia. Be there. Hey, welcome back to Bishop Justice. I have R.W. Allen. Guess what, fans? You know what? What does R.W. Allen stand for? I meant to ask him to get his permission. And uh, R.W. Allen, I got your permission. What does R.W. Allen stand for? Can I come in? Uh, yes. Your first name? Uh, it's uh, Richard Wayne. Richard and, Wayne. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm known uh, affectionately as Rick. Can I call you Rick? Please. Okay, do. thank yeah. you, Rick. You know, we got a lot of things going on in this town, and I. Let me just ask you a quick question. Yes. Because I, I got a major question I want to ask as a pastor of the church, and I'll wait to that later. But what makes you better than John Barrow? Well, John is uh, a career politician. That's right. Bishop. Uh, John uh, votes to keep his job. Right. Uh, I'm a businessman. Right. And uh, I've, I've shown that I'm a physically, physical responsible businessman. And I think that's what we need in Washington, D.C. Uh, John voted for the stimulus package, for example, right. and uh, it cost this country almost a, a, a you know a trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't seen the real benefits of this. And uh, you know he va he voted for Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I, you certainly I certainly will not be doing that. Mm -hmm. And then you know, th but probably the thing that's the biggest threat to to the business community is he voted against the repeal of Obamacare. Mm. And uh, we, don't, we don't really know what the cost of that legislation is going to be and what it's going to do to the business community. Right. I, I want to, we talk about John Barrow, but, but let me ask you this. Why are you against the other Republican candidates that are running against you now? Why, why mm. R.W. Allen versus everybody else? Uh, you know, that's a great question. Uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the other candidates running in the primary, Republican mm -hmm. primary, uh, you know, they're, they're great people. Any of those uh, candidates would be a better congressman than John Barrow, I can assure you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've said many times that we all share the same conservative values. Right. Um, but the bottom line is, it, it, it's this simple. Uh, uh, right now, this election is all about job creation. Right. Uh, I'm running against two attorneys, one of whom is a lobbyist mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and a career politician. And uh, I think at this time in, in the history of this country, we need business people who know how to create jobs and, uh, and know how to grow an economy in the I, United States Congress. I agree with you 100% of that, and, and th what, what you're saying that is, and I have to say this for the benefit of TV, uh, your opponents are welcome to come onto my TV show and sit here and talk about the same things you're talking about. Uh, I have to give them the opportunity. Exactly. But there's no bones about it, I support you. But I have to give them the well, opportunity to come on to the TV show. Man, do I support R.W. Allen? Yes, I do. In everything I do, radio, TV, I'm on nine different media outlets. Do I support R.W. Allen? Yes, I, of course I do. And uh, MCG, um, you know, my, my family there, uh, well, the Bishop, MCG community supports you. We have been overwhelmed and humbled by the support uh, of, uh, of not only you and, and what you represent, uh, but uh, the faith community uh, uh, and the business community. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I mean, uh, like I said, my wife and I have just been overwhelmed by the support that we've received. I, I talked to the people in the MCG, and um, they, they asked me, who would I support? It's the craziest thing you ever believe. Uh, word of mouth is is a tremendous yes. thing. Yes. Uh, they said, who you support? I said, R.W. Allen. Yeah. I said, well, Bishop, we support R.W. Right. Allen. They said, well, I don't know who R.W. Allen is because you support him. I support him, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, like, what do uh, I mean? Come on, just because, you know, but. Certainly with all the technology <laughs> uh, available this day and time. I don't understand uh, it. News can travel <laughs> real fast. But you're going to be on YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week on my TV station. I, when this show airs, I'll put it back on uh, YouTube uh, next week, and you'll be on there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you get some advertising that YouTube says I have 35 million viewers. Well, that's what they say. So, um, but. Your faith plays a major role in your daily life. Now, how do how does your faith, how how will your faith guide you, while you make your decisions in Congress? And that's kind of tough. Uh, yes. Well, you know, first is uh, if you're a Christian in Congress. Right. It's tough. Right. Well, well, first uh, let's talk about uh, let's go back to leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm a disciple of servant leadership, mm -hmm. uh, which comes right out of the New Testament. Right. Uh, and and that servant leadership is, is all about discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that is a prayer, uh, meditation on God's Word, uh, uh, habits, right. uh, you know, having the right habits, right. and uh, in putting yourself in a place where uh, you can really benefit from God's wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I will tell you this. I, I go to God and ask for wisdom every morning mm -hmm. and every night. And if at all possible, uh, unceasingly. Uh, every decision that I make, uh, I do my best uh, to, uh, to, to ask God to intercede. Mm. And uh, so that, you know, in the business world, we can't make very many bad decisions. That's right. Or we're out of business. That's right. It costs you money. And I will say this, that uh, my faith uh, has, uh, has, has been the, uh, it's, it's been what I've always relied on to make uh, the right decisions. Obviously, my wife and I are members of uh, Trinity on the Hill, longtime members mm -hmm. of Trinity on the Hill United Methodist Church. Yeah, exactly That's why we moved to Richmond County, yeah, to be closer I, to yeah, our church. Exactly uh, my wife's a musician. She's played the piano there for uh, uh, years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and of course, that church has played a major role yeah. in, uh, in, uh, in my spiritual advancement. We're going to have uh, the pastor of the First Baptist Church here, here uh, shortly. Good. So uh, I, uh, I, I, I'm all about religion, not because I'm the bishop, but right. I have a church in Georgia, South Carolina, and, and uh, North Carolina. But, right. Uh, I'm a military person. Let me ask you something. I, mm -hmm. I used to work for, uh, before I switched to the Republican Party, I worked for Don Johnson. Mm -hmm. I was in charge of Veterans Affairs. Mm -hmm. Don Johnson was an excellent man. Yes. I mean, good man. Uh, I was in charge of him. And then I switched to the Republican Party. I worked for Guy Milner. Right. And, um, but... The reason I switched to the Republican Party because I don't believe in the government in your business. Exactly. I'm not into quote unquote welfare. Right. I, I think you should go out and get a job. Exactly. Don't tell me you can't find a job. I can go out right here and get a job. I can create a job. Um, so when you go to Congress, uh, I, I know you're talking about how you're going to create jobs, but I think. How are you going to take things to the next level? That's what I kind of want to go. Uh, exactly. Yeah. How are you going to go? Yes, yes. You know, we got to go to the next and, level. You know, and we know what needs to be done. Right. Uh, you know, right now, uh, the, the problem with this economy is, well, is the government. Yeah, I, I, I don't believe in welfare. So how, how are we going to get people, you know? Well, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say, Rick. If we can get the government off mm -hmm. the backs, you know, the small business community creates 60% of the jobs in this that's country. That's exactly right. And if we don't have job growth, Right. It's going to come from the small business community, right, right. and right now the government is is uh, it's, it's too restrictive yeah. on small businesses, right. whether it be banks, construction companies. Uh, you know, every business person I've talked to in the 12th district, you know, I cannot believe how the government is keeping those people from growing their business yeah. because of regulation from putting capital back into the business because we have a tax code that's not fair and equitable. Right. This tax code needs to be scrapped. Okay. And, uh, you know, the thing is, you, give in, you have to give incentives to people mm -hmm. uh, uh, to prosper. You, you, you can't penalize mm -hmm. 
uh, that's no way. Uh, that's no way to prosper the, uh, the uh, this country. Uh, if we give the right incentives to the business community, so that uh, you know the only way to create jobs is to take risk, mm -hmm. and the only reason people take risk is to experience a reward. Right. And if we give people the right opportunities to do that, we're going to create jobs in this in this economy. And 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 when we create an economy that's creating jobs, then you're going to see. Uh, the government, uh, uh, we're going to see reduced government cost, mm -hmm. uh, substantial uh, right. re reduction in cost, and, uh, and and then of course what we've got to do is is deal with all the other government spending uh, that is wasteful. Right. Uh, that it, that again is a burden on society and on uh, on the business community. Well, Congressman Allen. Well, I already elected Congressman <laughs> Allen. <laughs> already gonna put you up there in Washington D.C. I have friends up there. My dad was uh, in charge of telecommunication at the Pentagon. So I'm a I'm a Washingtonian. I already know about the ins and outs. Mm -hmm. I down dine with the generals and colonels and politicians. So right. uh, we we know about all that. But I already anointed you Congressman <laughs> Allen, and I, I feel like he will do that. The thing I'm concerned about, and it's kind of leery to me. John Barrow, just you know, the Republican Democratic thing, and I just, I, I just can't figure out. The, the Democrats are, are failing. I mean, I mean, give me your take on that. I mean, look at what's going on. I mean, everybody's losing their job. Everybody's. I mean, come on. Right. Well, they talk about Obama. You gonna vote for Obama because he's black? No, I have to vote for the best man. I can't do that. So. If I have a daughter or a son, it's got to lose a job. I mean, of course, my daughter's an MCG and a student intern. But, Rick, I can't just vote for somebody because of the color of skin. The character, the character. So, I mean, what do you think about that? Well, I mentioned character earlier. I yeah. mentioned leadership earlier. And I mentioned, uh, you know, the problem we got is, wait, wait. Uh, okay. Wait, wait, I can't believe that. No, I can't believe my phone even came on. I, I, All right. I guess we'll edit that. Yeah, they'll edit it. I can't believe my phone <laughs> came on when I, I normally cut it off. Right. Uh, but getting back, uh, getting back to your question. Uh, it might have been somebody calling and they want to talk to you and ask you a question. <laughs> so, uh, so we might not edit that. Uh, look, I might have cut off somebody want to ask you a question. Well, uh, so we don't know. Okay? Yeah, so well, we might leave that in. <laughs> yeah, we, we like to answer questions. Uh, uh, because we're doing, it, we're doing this for the right reason. Yeah, I know. Uh, but, you know, the, the bottom line, uh, you know, with the Democratic Party, and, and again, uh, with Washington, yeah. is that uh, they vote to keep their job. I mean, it's yeah, all about job yeah, security yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to, uh, to this uh, Congress and, uh, and the career politicians. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'm a businessman. That's right. I'm not a career politician. Right. Uh, I know how to solve problems. I do that every day in business. Right. And, uh, you know, the reason I'm doing this, uh, Bishop, is that, uh, you know, there'll come a time when our children and grandchildren are going to be talking about the decisions that we're making at, during this coming, this current economic crisis. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, right now, this government is financing our standard of living on the backs of our children and grandchildren. That's to be Social Security and everything else? Well, what, 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 all the programs that are being created so they can keep their job. Right, 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 right. And, you know, I want my children and grandchildren right. to live the American dream. Well, you know, I keep my grandchild now, so I, I understand what you're saying. We, me and my wife, we, situation now where we rotate and keeping the grandchild, right. and it's, it's one of those things where I'm trying, I'm concerned about, you know, the future of my grandchild. Exactly. But I need somebody like you, Congressman Allen. I already made you the congressman <laughs> in there to make sure that my, my grandchild is going to be taken care of. Well, I'm going to take all the skills that I've learned in business over mm -hmm. the past 35 years to Washington, yeah. D.C., and I can mm -hmm. I assure you, I will fight for your grandchild and my grandchildren. Because I, I just I just concerned about them, and I it's, it's just one of those things. It's crazy how I'm f going on 50 years old and I'm raising a grandchild. I'm raising a child again. Me and my wife, she's MCG. I'm a professional businessman, you know, and now I got to turn around. And, so 
So now I'm concerned about the future of my children, you know, my grand, not my children, right. my grandchildren. Exactly. But I have to make sure that Congressman Allen is elected to office because to make sure that you can ensure that my, I can, you know, have to worry about that. But on a national level, we got something going on, and I'm kind of, I can't, I really don't want to talk about it because I'm supporting you. This is all about you. But um, what do you think about Milt Romney? Uh, well, you know, Mitt uh, is the leader. I'm uh, saying, if he, if he calls you and asks you support, what's he going to do? Well, uh, he, comes, he comes down here and says, Rick, I'm coming down here. I want you to support. Uh, I got a fundraise, whatever, whatever. Do you support Milt or su support Newt? Well, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I, I would tell Mitt that what I, the, the candidate that I'm going to support uh -huh. is the candidate that wins the Republican nomination. I like Ron Paul. I'm going to tell you no lie. Ron Paul, I love him. he got some stuff that he's off the chain. But none of that stuff's going to work. Right. It's not going to work. My wife loves Milt Romney. I like Newt. And so well, you know, I what, like Ron. <clears throat> too. Bishop, so it ain't going to Bishop, when I talk to folks from the 12th District, I, obviously uh, Newt Gingrich is a, 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 a Georgia, Georgia boy. Right. Georgia so man. you got to support him. And Georgia native. And, of course, he was elected to Congress. Right. And, uh, of course, that 94 Congress uh, that Newt, uh, Newt, when Newt became Speaker, Right. Accomplished uh, probably more than any Congress has in our history. That's right. Uh, right. Except maybe our founders. Right. And uh, you know, uh, I think uh, you know. Obviously, Newt has some great qualities. Rick Santorum has some great qualities. He does, but I, 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 I don't, I don't know why. I just can't. I don't know. I can't. I think Rick Santorum is running to be the vice president. Well, nominee. you know, that's what I think. again, uh, you know, that's I, what I think. That's I don't know how it works at that level, but yeah, you know, but, 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 you, but you but you those things, uh, and I hear them throughout the district. Yeah. And then, of course, Mitt Romney is a businessman, right. and uh, and uh, he's a he's a good business. Now, his business experience is quite different than than mine. He was in the uh, more in the uh, uh, you know large corporate world. Right. I'm a small businessman. Uh, but but you know he has uh, he has certainly demonstrated leadership qualities uh, over over his business career and frankly uh, right now uh, you know I think that we're going to have to have uh, people who who run businesses uh, to get us out of this mess. Rick, I'm gonna tell you something. I I I, I work for Guy Milner, and how I got that job with Guy Milner was everybody says this and that. The editorial page uh, editor got me a job with Guy Milner. I was the only black on the staff. I worked for Guy Milner and uh, treated me like like a king. I'm just going to say. Right. But I was, like I said, I was the only minority on the staff, and Guy Milner was just excellent to me and treated me. I mean, sh he should have won. And Guy Milner was a business. What I'm, the point I'm making is he business was a businessman. Business man, strong business. in his faith. Bi that's right. Yeah. And uh, when I met him and his wife at the airport, and they just were absolutely phenomenal. The point I'm making is, as a businessman, I think you bring something to Congress that nobody else is going to bring here in the last probably 100 years. Well, we got to wrap it up, but you're the best yeah. man for the job. Well, thank you, Bishop. And I, I will tell you this. Uh, there are zero contractors in the United States Congress. I think okay. it's time to elect one. All right. Well, we got to wrap it up. Mr. Allen, I, it's, been a, a, God, it's been a pleasure. I wish I had more time. Well. But you, I think I'm already calling Congressman Allen. Well, so thank you. we're already going to see you there. But don't forget about me. Yes. Thank you so <laughs> don't much. Don't forget about me when we get uh -huh. up there in the, in the White House. Well, I'll I put you in the President said White House. Well, I'll put you in the White House already. You'll have my cell number. <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in to Bishop Justice. You'll see my sponsors on there. Look at my sponsors, patronize them. We thank you and God bless you. Next time. Thank you.